Hello friends, and hopefully some enemies. My name is Flocka Watts, and I just got through holding and comforting my fiance, who is emotionally upset. You see, we're dealing with the hard fact that many people are dealing with at this moment. That her employer is most likely, due to the dictates of the almighty crown state government, will mandate that she receives this vaccine or be terminated. Now, for those of you that think, that's good, the mandate's good, she should have to take the vaccine, everyone should have to take the vaccine. You then are my enemy. And for those of you that think, I don't think that's good. I don't think the government should be mandating. I think each individual person should have the right to choose what kind of health treatments. Those of you who think that way are my friends. But I'm glad both friends and enemies are here. Because we can discuss all the nuanced arguments of this. But I've decided to make a documentary, we'll call it. A little mini doc. Now, for the record, I am not a documentarian. I've never done this before. Hell, I've barely even interviewed anyone. But in this documentary, we're going to see an interview with said fiance. I also went out on the town and did a man on the street interview with the help of my production assistant. And we asked, I think it's six people, but we'll see how we cut it up. A few questions about COVID and the vaccine and got a few cool answers. I'm also gonna have an interview with a good friend of mine who is in the midst, in the throngs, barely just outside of death's door, affected with COVID. Now, if you can't tell I'm being sarcastic, you're in the wrong place because this is for educated people. People that can, you know, think for themselves, not educated people anyway he's doing just fine he had a rough night I think maybe a down couple of days how many of us have had colds in the past flu in the past and we got through it just fine we didn't enjoy it at the time but we got through it just fine matter of fact I myself had the Delta force Delta variety of the COVID in July and I barely even noticed. So we got an interview with him, an interview with uh, my fiance, some man on the street interviews. And at the end of it, at the end of it all, stay tuned because I'm going to go through my little rant. And my perspective, so I can at least document this, get it out into the world. Who knows where it's going to go if it changes one mind from, hey, I don't think it's such a big deal. They mandate all the other vaccines, don't they? To, huh, I see what you're saying. That doesn't make sense. Then this is all worth it, I should say. If one person changes their mind. Anyway, that's it. Let's get into the interview. So when was it that you decided to get into the medical industry? Well, I decided I wanted to be an ultrasound technician the day that I had my first ultrasound when I was pregnant. With uh, mm -hmm. I thought it was the coolest thing ever, and I knew oh, that's what I was going to do someday. When did you first start working? 2011. So uh, 10 years, 2021. Here, this is your 10th anniversary. Yes of being a sonographer at one of the wildest hospitals in Albuquerque and now in a different town, Colorado. Seems like a nice place. It's a Catholic hospital, and, mm -hmm. but it's under Centura Hill. Mm -hmm. And do you remember when COVID hit? Yes. I, can't, I cannot even remember. Did you not work or what happened? They cut my hours. Uh-huh because they only had one tech there a day running the ER and the inpatients and the ICU. 
they cut back all of our outpatients. So them just eliminating all the non-emergency stuff mm -hmm. forced everybody else to not work as much. And that lasted how long? I don't know if I remember. It was a few months, I think. Yeah. And then slowly... I was working call and then and one day a week for a couple months. What was it like in the beginning for you and the doctors and nurses and... Scary. How so? <laughs> Don't make me cry. <laughs> oh. What were you afraid to go to work and die? Huh? Yeah. Well. No, I was scared to bring it home to David. Oh. Now you're gonna make <laughs> me cry. <laughs> You remember that? Kind of, but I was always like, fuck this disease, I don't like it. I think it's bullshit. Yeah, it's kind of hard to remember exactly how we dealt with it. And But how long, you know, later was it that you realized maybe it's... It wasn't that serious. Yeah. <laughs> um, I think once they started bringing some of our outpatients back, and started getting back to a regular routine. Because they so, were going broke. Yeah. Because it was so, dead for a while, wasn't it? Three or four months, yeah. Was it ever we filled didn't up with have, COVID? No, we didn't have any COVID patients at that time. And then, not really that I was aware of. In the ICU, but you had a bunch of people with <clears throat> COVID that were there for other things and stuff, I think. Yeah, um, and then once they realized that it was causing blood clots, then that's when I started realizing how many patients there were. Because oh. then we started scanning them. The COVID's causing the blood clots. Mm -hmm. I forgot about <clears throat> about that. I thought the vaccine did that too. It does. Oh. Well, they were transferring all of our COVID patients <clears throat> out to other hospitals. And then once they got full of patients, we started sectioning off areas of our hospital. That's when they, the whole second floor was sectioned off. You could not go to the second floor without PPE. Um, that was... Went through the zippers and the hoods and everything and... Oh goodness. Um, we had several hundred COVID patients at that time. Several hundred? Yeah, because it, it peaked up in March and we were cut back for several months and then it slowed down and then it peaked again when it hit Colorado pretty bad. And how did you feel at that point, you think, towards the disease? Like, were you still as scared? Oh, no. Were other doctors and nurses scared? No. Elaborate. <laughs> <laughs> um, to that point, we were just kind of sick of it. I know I went to a COVID patient's room in the ER, and they didn't have any PPE out front of the room and I asked the nurse, I said, where's this patient's COVID positive, right? Where's, is there a cart for PPE? And he was like, everybody has COVID. He's like, we're just go in the room. He's like, if you're worried, you can go find it somewhere else. Huh. So, and he was going in and out of the... The doctors didn't give a flying rat's ass mm -mm. at that point. No. Hmm. They don't go, they stopped using N95s. They stopped gowning. They just go in and out and there was no stopping it so they started acting normal mm -hmm. <laughs> instead of batshit crazy yeah they stopped caring if an outpatient had symptoms for COVID or not they still had to scan them it wasn't that big of a deal anymore if they had like another issue that you had to check their thingamabobber in their gut their liver or their thyroid or something and they had COVID symptoms that they're just like, ah, I don't worry about it. Yeah. <laughs> Interesting. Interesting. Do you remember when the vaccines, people started taking vaccines? Do you remember anything about... Um, that was this year. I can't even... Um, they came around. We were, we were some of the first oh, that's right. to be offered the vaccine. Mm -hmm. And a couple of people took them right away. And they tried to 
force it on me at that time and say that, you know, I was going to need it. And I said, no way. Come on, just do it. Everybody's <laughs> doing it. Um, I wanted more information about it. And then they kind of left me alone for a while. Didn't ask me ever again because they knew that I wouldn't do it. Do you feel like you're the only one that was not taking it or did you not talk to anybody else? Um, a few of my coworkers I know that refused to take it. So I know that I'm not alone. Yeah. Good. And I remember at some point they are, uh, offered some sort of incentive. Yeah, we got offered five hundred dollars to get the COVID shot. Yeah, five hundred dollars. I know one person that took the bait. <laughs> one person I remember that took the bait. Yeah, but they did pay everyone else that had taken it too, right? Mm-hmm. So at least they're not that screwed up. They're like, all right, we give up five hundred dollars. That's our yeah. price. There's twenty-one thousand employees within Centra Health, and mm -hmm. everyone that got the COVID vaccine. Got five hundred dollars. Pocket change. I say raise yeah. the price. I remember at that time. Did it make you second guess your decision not to take the vaccine, or mm -hmm. were you like, well, maybe five hundred dollars would be nice? Uh, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. No. Yeah. Good. Maybe five hundred thousand. <laughs> so over time, people started getting the vaccine in the real world too, and. You started seeing them come in with mm -hmm. complications. Mm -hmm. What were those all about? Um, at first, we saw a lot of swollen lymph nodes, and we were biopsying them until they realized that it wasn't lymphoma or it wasn't cancer. They were swollen lymph nodes from the vaccine mm -hmm. that just don't want to go down. They're mad. They're fighting those lymph nodes. Yeah. And... Mm -hmm. You had a similar reaction to the flu shot. The flu shot every year. Whatever side I get the flu shot on, that whole side will my lymph nodes will swell up, up into my jaw and in my mouth to the point where I can't eat because mm -hmm. it feels like my teeth are gonna fall out. You said if I have to take the vaccine, my teeth will fall out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And then we started seeing a lot of blood clots. Mm. And that's from clots. one of the vaccines specifically, or do they know? Uh, mostly the Johnson, Johnson, Johnson. Yeah, the scan for blood know. clots. Did they stop doing that? Or are they still? No, we still do those. Do you know personally anybody that got COVID? Yes. Last, you know, in the beginning. Yes. First round. We'll say the 2020 variety. <laughs> Yeah, do you want to say who? My daughter. Your daughter? Yeah. And, and she my had some roommates. Soon to be daughter in law. Mm hmm. And her roommate. Yeah. In those houses, one person would have it and one person didn't. Uh, yeah, there was two households where somebody had it and somebody didn't. Mm hmm. These are just the immediate family that you know, and they mm -hmm. had what experience with COVID? Uh, my daughter lost her taste and smell, and that's it. Mm -hmm. Soon-to-be daughter-in-law had maybe what felt like slight allergies. So a f fair summary could be that they barely even noticed. Mm -hmm. Do you know personally anyone that had severe complications from COVID or died? Personally, no. I mean, I saw a few in the hospital. Yeah, you always yeah. hear those stories. Yeah. But no. Was there word around the campfire that it's like, oh, we lost 50 people today? No, never. It was just like, oh, somebody died. I think they had COVID every now and then. If we heard about it, mm -hmm. I wouldn't necessarily say, oh, at that patient I had yesterday died from COVID. I never heard any of that. Yeah. So interesting. You <clears throat> have not gotten COVID. Not that you, I know of. You got tested a handful of times I remember in the beginning mm -hmm. uh, you got tested when your daughter got it mm -hmm. or you went with her to get her test mm -hmm. and still no no positive results so in this year 2021 we had a vacation planned in 
July. My kids were sick. They went up to a summer camp the week before that I was supposed to pick them up, and then we were going to take a week vacation in a different mountain town. And they and a lot of kids at the camp got sick, from what I heard. Mm -hmm. And they came with a little congestion and a little stuffy nose. But they never said, like, oh, yeah, no, we were hiking. and I mean, they did hikes. They did all kinds of activities and they never said well I didn't do it I had to stay in bed her kids were laying in bed because mm -hmm. they were so sick never heard any of that and I was mad because they got me sick yeah but it took about three or four days after I had seen them no I remember the first day we were up there you're like I have COVID oh I was just kidding <laughs> you're like my throat I'm yeah like, something was up with my throat and I was just like what is this um, but you always say you have COVID. <laughs> yeah, that, I was just joking, but something was up with my throat. And then like two, at least two or three days later, it was okay. I remember waking up that morning saying, nope, I got a really sore throat. Mm -hmm. It's a real one. It's being caused by something other than me, by something other than I'm, what I'm doing to my throat. And um, I'm not happy about it. And... Yeah, that's when you admitted it to everybody else we were with. Yeah, I got a sore throat. I'm sick. And then everybody else started going, uh, oh, yeah, me too. So uh, the group of people we had, the two of the people had, three of the people had COVID already mm -hmm. before. Two of the people had the vaccine out of yeah. the entire group. And you and your son were the only persons not sick up until that point that I got sick. I fell off the radar. So and what's funny is me and my son have been exposed to COVID since the beginning. Right. And I've That's never tested positive. After the trip was said and done, I come home and I realized that my, my symptoms changed from head cold, congestion, coughing, the sore throat first to that kind of started to go away. And then my stomach was just jacked for like three or four days, mm -hmm. jacked with sharp pains. And, and then it was during that time that my fucking taste vanished and my sniffer, which I pride myself on being able to smell things kind of went away too. I don't know if it's fully back yet. But it wasn't until that point that I was like, I wonder if this is COVID. And you were like looking it up on your phone. Mm -hmm. And I was like, it can't be COVID. Or maybe you said it's COVID. And I was like, there's no way because it, I thought it was something else. This was just a fucking cold. Yeah. But then you're like, no, there's people that are saying the stomach pain, sharp pains, the fucking everything lines it right up. And I was like, oh, okay, well, shit. I guess we had the Delta. Delta Force came in and whooped our ass, except for you. And Nothing. Did your son get symptoms? Mm -mm. No. Your parents oh, uh, both had the vaccine. Name, I guess. They both got a little bit sick. And they got a little they bit didn't sick. They didn't bother him one bit. Complain much. Good. And then my kids were the ones that initially had it, and they were over it by the time I was suffering. And... Who else was there? Your daughter? Mm-hmm. They hardly got anything, but they did go from the sniffles to the stomach aches huh. as well. And then um, when my parents got home, my brother got the same thing. That's right. How did he handle it? Fine. I never... I just heard, mm -hmm. heard her say that he was sick now, too, but... That was it. So we're pretty highly suspicious that we got the Delta COVID at that point. And this is in July, and it's now towards the end of August. It's now actually towards the end of September that I'm editing this, and I just wanted to fill you in that we have all had positive antibody tests since then. Mystery solved. How did the vaccine mandate come up at work? You got some kind of email? I started hearing rumors about other hospitals mandating it. And then 
we got an email at work from our CEO saying that they've decided it wasn't the right choice for them, that they were not going to mandate it as of right now. Um, was they that a- suggested that we should and said that it's the best choice but want us to make the decision. Hmm. But that, that they were going to revisit the discussion of making it mandatory once the FDA approved the vaccine. Okay, so that was an email that he sent out to the employees. Last week. And I feel like there was an article. Did he write an article? The day before that email came out, yes. In like Denver Post or one of those? Sun, uh, Sun, Sun yeah. Post or whatever that's called, yeah. Because I read that and I thought, this is this guy's straddling both sides of the fence. Mm-hmm. He's he's definitely not like, hey, we're going to stand up for people's rights. We need to leave it up to them and the doctors. He kind of mentions that, but then he's also like, you know, vaccines are this, that, and the other, covering his ass so people don't think he's an anti-vaxxer or whatever. That's the feeling that I got. Mm-hmm. And then... Yeah, one paragraph reads like... He's not for the mandate, and then the next paragraph reads that he is. Fucking wishy-washy but it, bullshit. But it says he doesn't want to lose any employees. That'll be funny. The greatest labor shortage of all time. And now we're saying, oh, and a lot of you aren't going to be able to work. In New York, you can't work because you have to have a vaccine passport to go to work. Mm-hmm. What ridiculousness is this? But hey, this back to journalism. Um, so that was last week and that was kind of a shocking thing that we had to deal with because the realization hit mm-hmm. that I'm what, what were you job. thinking? I'm going to get fired. <laughs> because yeah, did you, when you initially were like, oh shit, this is happening. They're mandating that, or they may mandate because I remember when you told me, you kept referring to saying that he wasn't. They don't want to do it. It's not right for them. They're not going to do it until it's approved. And I was just like, it's going to be approved any day now. I literally said that a few days ago. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden, out of the fucking blue, they're like, hey, FDA's back and they're done. It's approved. That was Monday. Today's Tuesday. Mm -hmm. And they sent out an email Friday. Thursday. Thursday, or they had a meeting and said what? The meeting or the email? Uh, whatever you told me earlier, which was they revisited I it. heard through the grapevine that they had a meeting on Friday, which was the day after the email came out. Okay. That they decided they are not going to mandate it. The email came out on Thursday, mm-hmm. last week? Mm-hmm. Oh, shit. It's been a, yeah, it feels like an eternity dealing with this issue. Yeah. But, okay, um, Thursday But that was Friday. hearsay. I don't know. I don't know. For um, sure. But for sure. Then it was approved yesterday, and you went back to work today. And Did I, you hear anything? I, that's when I heard the hearsay about what the meeting was on Friday. And that they were saying, we're not going to mandate it. Yes. But I think that was probably all, we're not going to mandate it until, until the FDA. Approved. Yeah. I just am... Um, I'm not an anti-vaxxer. I obviously have all had my vaccines and I get the flu shot and... You're forced to get the flu shot? Yeah. Um, I don't understand how they can say that there's no long-term side effects. But they don't even know if, how long it lasts. They don't know that it... The efficacy. That it, that it, after six months you need a booster shot. But they know that there's no side effects. How's that possible? Did you know that the, the government made it a law that the companies that make the vaccine are not allowed to be sued? Mm-hmm. You knew that? I wonder if that plays into most people's decisions. It seems like a lot of people are getting the vaccine because... Because of the mandate? Yeah, and then this weekend when we found out and we're dealing with it, we went out of town long drive and we're talking about it thinking well shit i guess you're gonna have to start working with me (laughs) we're gonna have to start working together because did you have any thought or at any point did you say well maybe i should just take it i mean 
I don't I don't know what I'm gonna do. I feel like yeah. there was one point where you had decided I'm just gonna take it. Yeah. And I still don't know. Because you don't want to yeah. lose your job. Yeah. I mean I'm still working on paying off my student loans. <laughs> yeah. You're gonna have to keep paying on my student loans for a career I can't even take I can't even do. They're basically telling you if, you know, maybe they do have the balls to say, no, we're not going to mandate it. But if they do, you're, have you made up your mind? Mm -hmm. No. Because I'm not forcing you not to take it, for the record. I think... I mean, I'm definitely leaning one way, but I don't know how I'm going to pay my bills. Well, we'll take care of that. <laughs> we'll figure it out. That's the thing that a lot of people get scared about. And they're like, well, what about my, my job, my job, my job? I don't, I, I don't necessarily care about hanging on to the job, but I have to pay my bills. And I don't want to put that on you. You can work for me. <laughs> I do work for you. <laughs> I know, but you get paid. We'll take care of it. <laughs> Now that we talked about, you've heard me go on a few rants this weekend, which I'll probably do before or after this in this video, which is what about people that are already immune naturally? And you've shown multiple examples of being around people that's directly in your family that are exposed, that are, are being exposed to them, that are testing positive. All of us got sick and you didn't. It would appear that your immune system can handle it. I'm gonna go down fighting. I'm gonna try every loophole I can to get out of it. Well, Whether that be showing that I have the antibodies, which I'm taking that test this week. That's right. We signed up on our own with this realization that why couldn't antibodies, and we've seen multiple doctors and uh, scientists online claiming that natural immunity is better than the immunity you're getting from the vaccine, which wanes mm -hmm. and is not as comprehensive when you're exposed to the actual virus. And you've been exposed to, what, Alpha Company and Bravo Company and Charlie and Delta and now um, <laughs> whatever's the next one. You, you get exposed to all of them. Your body's like, all right, bitches, we can handle this. Yeah, I mean, but, I'll take the antibody test once a month, once every six months. If the vaccine lasts every six months, how come my antibodies don't last every six months? They last longer, from what I hear. That? I want to get the um, test for the blood clotting disorder. Because if that runs in my family, then I'm medically exempt. That there were no exemptions. You can have a medical exemption and a religious exemption. They say it's limited exemptions, but... If I do have a blood clotting disorder, I am definitely exempt from taking that vaccine. But it just seems from reason and logic that you have negative effects, reactions to the flu vaccine. Mm -hmm. You have been exposed. You've worked this entire time exposing yourself. What's the meme out there? It's like, yeah, we worked through this whole thing without any vaccine. Being called a hero. Being called a hero, and now we're fucking, what? Gonna get fired. Gonna get fired. I mean, you said you're, you haven't decided yet. But we're, you're, you're hopeful that the company's not gonna mandate it. Mm -hmm. But it just got approved so they could easily back out. And probably down the road, they're just going to keep forcing this shit on people. So if that happens and they come down and say, all right, you got till. September 30th, you have to have your first shot. They're already saying Fully that? vaccinated by October 31st. That's ironic. Halloween, huh? Okay. Yeah. Good one. That's in that same wishy-washy email. They're like, we're, we're not, not going to do, do it, it but, but if we did... These are the dates. <laughs> it's going to be September, da, 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 and yeah, we expect approval any day now, so hey, I'm just doing what I'm told. Yeah, doing what I'm told. so it might be, uh, what, That's a month 36 away. days from now? 
Yeah. So if it gets to that point, you haven't made up your mind what you're going to do. Well, I'm going to fight it. And if you lose all the fights and they're like, tomorrow you either get the shot or you don't come to work. I don't think I'm going to do it. The main reason I w would do it is so that I could keep my house because it's renting it from me or my daughter's renting it from me. And I help pay for that. And I wouldn't want to kick her to the curb. So I would do it for her. She says, she's telling me not to do it. She's telling you not to do it. <laughs> She'll be fine. We can handle it. I am not forcing you to do shit, but I'll, <laughs> I'll kill 10 people before you get that fucking vaccine. I'll just to see your body swell up. My teeth fall out. And your teeth fall out. You like you my just, teeth. <laughs> you have the best teeth. I can't, I just can't fathom this anti-immunity thing anti-science is I have immunity we have immunity isn't that the goal well do you feel like it's uh, brave of you to make the decision or it's just terrible and unfortunate to be put in that position terrible and unfortunate I think we should all have the right to do what we choose with our bodies. Hmm. You'd think. I don't know what would have been better to say. That I won't take it or am I going to take it or... It would be better to say honestly the, how I the feel. truth, yeah. Okay. I want to get a feeling for what you're actually feeling. And this dystopian nightmare that we're living in like oh shit i just had the perfect job that i worked my ass off for for 12 years 10 years of work two years of school and they're saying no you're done working because because why i can't fight off the virus because i can fight off the virus mm -hmm. i fought the fucking virus mm -hmm. multiple times and i never got it no because you won't take the vaccine <clears throat> but what's the point of the vaccine so i'm curious to know if these hospitals are going to turn patients away if they don't have the vaccine. So if they want everybody within the hospital to have the vaccine, what about the patients? Dude, they're saying... Do they have to have the vaccine to come inside? I heard a, a handful of things yesterday <sighs> about legislation proposed that, yes, they're going to start turning people away. Uh, yeah, because what does it matter if I have the vaccine if Joe Schmo over here doesn't? I don't think the vaccine should be the determining factor. If it's immunity, then it's immunity. And if it's non-immunity, the people that don't have immunity are going to get sick or their weak immune systems. Those are the ones that die. That's how nature works. But, but that, that's, the, I mean, I'm, my point is that how is the hospital to say that the people that work within this building have to have the vaccine, but the people that oh, come into this building don't. don't. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, that wouldn't make any sense. I mean, none of it makes all that much sense, really. There was a story about doctors walking out in protest. Yeah. Not There's in a, a good way. Protests. No, I mean, in the other side of the coin. Oh, because they won't mandate Cause it? People, no, because people aren't getting the vaccine. So they walked out to protest people not getting the vaccine. Hmm. And I was like, oh my God, that sounds like a respon response propaganda because you know or I'm sure you know of stories of people that are protesting it. Yeah. That are, I mean, posting things like, fuck this shit. I already made it through this. Why do I have to get vaccinated? And for me, it's not necessarily that it's a political thing. It's, well, the mandating part is definitely a political thing. But the taking the vaccine itself is, it's too new. It's too new. They don't know anything about it. They don't even know if it works, and it, it's showing more well, and more that it doesn't work. it's obviously not working. Yeah, it's not working. <laughs> it doesn't... Well, maybe... It, no, it works. It decreases the severity you would have had. Oh, does it? 
This or does it cause it to mutate faster? Or does it cause it to... They have no idea. No fucking idea. Nobody knows. That's impossible to know. They don't know what's going to happen to you five years from now with that vaccine. Well, I'll dig into it more in the rest of this video about that bullshit about them saying normally a vaccine is like a three-year time period at minimum. To be FDA before approved. Before it's approved. Yeah, I and think it was May, fucking... May of 2023. Right. Is when the official date of when it should be Could be approved. approved. Could be approved. Because you have to see, you know, how long does this last and what does it do to the body? Yeah, and they just switch over. Like, and oh. after nine months, they're going to say, you have to get it, even though we don't know what it's going to do to you? That's insane. All right, everybody, I'm here with Diane. We're going to ask some questions. Um, why should a person or why shouldn't a person get the vaccine? Well, we're both vaccinated, so we are pro-vaccine. Uh, I think it's something to protect your neighbors. To prevent dying from COVID? It's a lethal disease with no cure. I don't know why you wouldn't get a vaccine. What do you feel the purpose of getting the vaccine is? Or like, what's the motivation that someone would have to get it? No clue, man. No motivation. <laughs> I was practically forced at my job. But. Yeah. I don't know why people are so afraid of it now. You know, it's, I think it's just, yeah. <laughs> Too many people talking about it. That's up to each individual person. You have got to do your own research. Mm -hmm. um, I got my shots. Um, I was asked by people who love me to say, you know, do your research, look at it. See what you think. I mean, I think we're all going to get touched by the virus and get the virus at some point, perhaps, but not die from it if you have the vaccine. It's not my right to say whether you should or shouldn't have to. Um, it seems to be the people who have taken the shot seem to have less reaction. I also think to protect those that are immunocompromised or people that have other comorbidities and stuff right. to protect them. The vaccine does that. And I think it just makes it harder to transmit from person to person. So you're going to get quicker, like I said before, to that endemic versus pandemic. Yeah, they like kind of mandated you to have it or you couldn't keep the job type deal? Pretty much. That's what they were pretty much saying. <laughs> so they forced you by peer pressure. Right? Yeah, pretty much. They, they were going to make us gown up and wear masks and face shields, the whole, the, whole the works, yeah. All right, so here we are with my longtime adversary. And the reason he's here today is, why don't you tell us? So... What happens is Tuesday night, I go to an open house at my daughter's school. How old is your daughter? She's uh, nine years old. Already? Yeah. Mm. So we go to her open house. I go, I get done. I'm supposed to uh, go meet up with a friend that night. He takes a little too long doing dinner with his family. He's in town from Hawaii. But I uh, feel under the weather that night, go to sleep, wake up the next morning, still have a little bit of a sore throat, kind of feeling a little fatigued. <clears throat> go into work. My boss says, why are you wearing a mask? I said, um, you know, I'm feeling under the weather. He's like, well, you should probably, what are your symptoms? He said, uh, oh, just to be safe, let's kick you out. <clears throat> and I said, all right. Oh, did they do a temperature check or something? Mm -hmm. They did a temperature check at 100.5. <clears throat> mm. Just barely over that, that 100.3, I guess, that threshold that they say is like the, the COVID whatever huh. number. So I go to the urgent care. Don't go there. If you want a rapid test, they charge you 200 bucks and it was three hours. So don't do that. Oh, uh, geez. That was the most bucks. miserable part of COVID was sitting there waiting for my test in my Honda Civic. And I'm 6'3", 250 trying to <laughs> sandwich me in there as I'm waiting. It's about 80, 80 degrees outside in the morning. Uh huh. The physician comes out and I'm like, oh, I know what this is. It's a wrap. They got me. He says, yeah, if you got COVID, here's some paperwork. Get ready. It's about to get wild. It's about to get wild, he says. And I said, okay, right on, man. Have a good day. Boom. So going home, call my wife. Hey, you know, this is what's going on. So I got COVID. Yeah, so she has to quarantine because of her job. So she leaves. 
get my kid, my daughter, we had kept her out of school on Sunday because she had a temp, a fever. So we said, no, we're going to keep her home. She's been with my parents the first two days and my other niece. So our, that was our main concern at the time was like, hey. Exposing your parents. Yep. And I'm, I'm like, hey, that's my main concern is getting them away. Luckily, my mom was down the street with them. She brought them to the house. Boom. Then, yeah, then I call work and it was just boom, 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 boom. Like the world erupted. All the stuff you can, can't do. Who are you around? This and that. Just the typical, you know, COVID stuff. What was weird was they made me try to say who I was around that was vaccinated and unvaccinated. And there's different mm-hmm. rules for COVID exposures at that time. Uh, at your job? Or? Yeah. For how they can, how they can uh, let you let them stay at work or not. Same with my wife's employment too. They said there's different rules for your quarantining um, for COVID as far as like if you're vaccinated or not. Because I don't know. That's, I'm not sure on that. They think, I think they maybe think that there's some, it reduces transmission or something like that. I don't know, but it's if you're vaccinated, something, something with that. So people that I was exposed to for probably, you know, less than, less than the 15 minutes, unless they were symptomatic, they didn't have to go, go home. But the people that weren't, if I was in contact with them for 15 minutes, you have to go home no matter what. So how many people they send home? Just one. I was only around one person more than 15 minutes. Wow. <clears throat> and that day was what day? Wednesday. The 25th. So almost a week. Yeah. Tomorrow will be a week. Okay, because you called me that day. Yeah. What did I tell you to do? I don't even remember. Come over. <laughs> oh, yeah, you're like, hey, come over. And I said, you're crazy. I don't yeah. give a flying fuck. Oh, I know. It's a, it's a mixed bag, for sure. When you go through this process, like... The I have sickness? A, or the... Just the your reactions you get from The people. reactions, yeah. Well, just tell me about the sickness first, because... Nah. Nah? Uh, it's... I guess I'm... I mean, you see how everything sensationalized in the news. You know, you and my my father, he's a, he's a pretty rough and tumble, pretty straight dude. And he's even concerned, because I think the media, you know... He's, he likes to watch the news and they, Scare tactics. they they sensationalize, I think, a lot of it, which, you know, just like everything else, I think some people have, you know, worse than others, right? Like a sprained ankle, uh, you know, something happens to people. People deal with it differently. And yeah. it just so happens that we were really lucky, everyone in my family, mild symptoms. Headache was the worst for uh, me and my wife, a little sinus congestion and then some uh I got gut, it, bubble gut, guts. It, yeah, BGs, as they say, <laughs> the bubbles. But uh, yeah, and then I just today I lost my my, my, my sense of smell today. Congratulations! It's Can a you weird still one. taste? I mean, did yeah. No, yeah, no. The taste was actually good because that that smoothie was pretty good. I was yeah, like, damn the smoothie. So <clears throat> my bet, taste went harder than my smell. I bet you my my taste will start going tomorrow. I could tell this morning there was like a different type of sensation in my uh, in my nose when I was blowing my nose. Hmm. Like a different smell or kind of like a texture i guess i could feel in the back of my like in my nasal passage right here with my tongue i could feel like oh. yeah but so does it compare to how does it compare to all your sicknesses in the past whether you got colds is it the worst one you ever had not even close not i'll even. say it's uh if there's a teeter totter it's probably like you know right in the middle if we're well, if we're going one to ten ten would be strip strep throat for me i'm dead I'm, I'm, you know. That's funny. I mentioned strep throat in my little rant, which and it's is like, game over, game over for your boy. But uh, you know, like a little cold. This is probably like about a four or five for the for the couple of days. And the thing that and pisses, it was mostly the stomach shit, wasn't it? And then uh, this the, the congestion is what what pisses you off because you just feel like it's uh, never ending. Just never just stays there. I still kind of feel a little <laughs> congested a month later. I don't like that at all. Like that's the worst part. Is the, the annoying is more than the hurt. Right. You know, you're just stuffed. But no, it's definitely when people find out, it's a lot of different uh, reactions. Reactions. Who else got it in your family? My wife, all of us, all four of us. And what about your parents? No, no symptoms. 
Um, They're vaccinated, but they no symptoms. My niece, no symptoms. And they're in their 60s, right? 60s, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think the vaccinations are great for people in the 60s for yep. that very reason. And, and they are. I mean, like, uh, my dad had a stroke, like a mild stroke, uh, probably seven years ago. So he had some stuff, too, you know. Just uh, he's not exactly, he's worked hard, hard his whole life. He's so not exactly the picture of health. But, you know, for those people, I think absolutely that's... Uh, you know, if you if you are worried about it at all, you should be more than willing to to take it. You know, if you if you want to do it. But uh, I don't know. I don't. I definitely don't agree with them. I'm not a. I'm not one to be mandated to do anything with your body, right? Like, you should you should be. I mean, be able to do what you want with your damn body, man. Like that's. Uh, there are ways, you know. Like, we we are trying to eliminate. Uh, freedom of choice by just you know using risk as a as a almost like a justification you know what I mean and uh, we don't do it with a lot of other things you know what I mean like that's yeah it's not a consistent no like that that's my problem with if all you this, have the same reaction to the the numbers of drinking how many and people, driving yeah how many or, people die driving or, sh- or obesity you know like hey why don't we mandate everyone lose weight till they get below a BMI of whatever is obese you know because like at the end of the day uh you know what I mean? Like we we have access to all this stuff, right? You have access to do a lot of things, and I'm not trying to sit here and tell people how to live their lives. But when you have so many freedoms in other parts of life, this vaccine is—I mean, this this coronavirus is not a death sum, not a death a death certificate. You know, like yeah, I get it. We probably don't want, but for you to mandate something when we're still so unsure of this, still less than one in five people over the age of 85. They get COVID, die. Still less than one out of five. And they are going to, I mean, no offense, but, grandma and grandpa, but you know, you're on your but last that with years. The, we don't even do that with the flu, but you can get, because as a senior, you have the uh, the ability to choose if you want a flu shot or not. Mm-hmm. Right? And I bet you, Absolutely. I yeah, haven't seen the numbers, but I'm assuming they're probably pretty close. If you get the, the flu or corona, you're probably cooked either way if you're over 85. It's probably not looking good for you either way. Right. Right. So like, there's my thing. And then you're telling me that everything I've heard about this virus has not been a hundred percent true. There's no, everything they've said, do this, do this, do this. So it'll go away or do this, do this, do this. So it's crazy how it changes so often yet. They're absolutely certain the vaccine. That's what I don't like. That's what I don't like. I like there's no long-term side effects. And, and and you're trying to make an absolute over something we don't even fully understand yet. You know what I mean? Preach to the choir. Yeah. That's like trying to fuck before you're fully hard. You know what I mean? They don't work <laughs> like that. We may cut that out. Well, some people need to know that's how dumb it is. We, we not, haven't had the vaccine for a year, right? We have it. We've barely, not even had it for a year. No. And you're mandating it already? Yeah. Because world almighty FDA said it's okay. No, and, and guess and that, who's pushing and, the FDA? And now my thing is that, okay... Let people go, right? Like they, they're letting, uh, you let, you let, you're letting, you're making people do this before you haven't, you were trying to mandate this stuff before your governing body for that shit was even saying it's a hundred percent. They were starting to mandate before that. Oh, yeah. oh, that's yeah. crazy. The governing body thing is, is a bullshit thing. I but mean, still though, that's just an ox. If you just look at it and it's like just infancy and in that. Right, this is the most obvious overreach of authority that I think I've ever seen in the US especially and yeah, for sure people are just going along with it which brings me to what we were talking about earlier it's like you're saying well oh yeah companies can mandate it if they want because because why what they're 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 companies they're corporations they can yeah but all it takes is everybody that doesn't believe in the mandates to stand up and say hey we're going to quit if you fucking do this stupid shit. 30, 40, 50% uh, of the people. I just and it shuts down the business. But then you're telling me what? They do it. They use their financial power, right? To Because to, to, that's scary, right? Because what have we done with the American paycheck? We spread it so thin with everybody, right? Because they got so much cool shit, so much shit you got to buy. You're spread so fucking thin with your money, yeah, right? You're a slave. Yeah, so then you can't quit. You can't quit. Because then you, you got, say, my, my lifeline, my only life, in the richest goddamn country in the world. You're holding on. 
where what life. you make in two weeks would last a year for most people in the world, you're like, I can't quit. I can't quit. I could never lose my See, job. See, I, I, just, I just thought about that when we were talking, when you were just saying it right now. That's a fucking... They get you in a position, and they don't do it on purpose, but the no. system kind of helps works. it. Yeah, helps it. And they, they, that's the perfect way, right? Because if you wanted to control someone, that is the easiest route right now is the coolest shit almost that everybody lives off of and this is probably going to be i mean being a hypocrite is like it's going on some type of social media or some type of electronic fulfillment that people get hey. right you have to keep up with the joneses because that's the only thing that makes a lot of people happy is this dumbass little thing you fuck with every day mm -hmm. and no matter how they get you it's some type of cool shit and the only way to do cool shit is to have a little bit of green in your pocket. And if you don't have, if you're not connected into the matrix. It's called the headlock. You don't, you don't get it's all It's called the stuff. headlock. When they give you enough to, that you don't want to lose it, then you're not going to stand up. But if you got nothing to lose. But yeah. for most people in their defense, they haven't had the opportunity to go into the wild, right? Because even like this last year, if you would have lost your job, you didn't have to fend for your own. Oh, because Big Daddy was giving you money? Hey, come here. We got a bunch of, you know, it's like being out in the wilderness and you stumble upon a cabin. And we got fucking bread and shit in here and a nice place to sleep. Or you can go fucking figure it out on your own. It would be a lot easier if you've already proven it to yourself, right? Like shit, when the going gets That tough, I can survive. Yeah. And you're saying that because they brought everyone into the teat of the government, that they still don't know how to survive on their own. They're still scared. And they, now that it's like, okay, yeah, we'll do it every day. We'll See, like, when, like with the, what, what you did, leaving, you know, being, doing stuff on your own to financially support yourself. Best decision I ever made, for the record. Yep. But how many people are willing to take that jump? It's not for everyone. It's not for 99.9% .9 <laughs> of people. Yeah, we're the only people that will work 80 hours a week, so we don't have to work 40. Yeah. And it's, uh, it's even easy for me to get sucked into it now of being soft, complacent. Yeah. Because uh, the, what if they told you now that you, you had a bad, you've had COVID, obviously. You mm -hmm. got a positive test. Now, I don't know if the place you work is going to mandate vaccines. It's not a healthcare place, but have they heard them? What would you do if they did mandate the vaccine? I try everything in my power to, to weasel my way out. But in the end... I already know the answer. You don't have to. Don't have to lie. It depends on what my options were. Life's about options, right? Like if you, uh, I've been trying to hire you for fucking five years. Negotiations all about leverage, right? Uh huh. That's what it is. The place right now. They're not. A, they're. I think the employees are at a more advantageous spot, spot than before COVID, right? Because me right now, there's people. Kill them for people just to show up. And if you're going to do fucking your ABCs twice, you're almost, you know, you're... They're going to hire you. Yeah. So I don't know, like, <laughs> a bird in hand, right? It's better than two in the bush. So I like to do that. But as far as me right now and, and, and my, uh, like, place in life right now, I think I, I'm at a good place where uh, and maybe I would stay and get vaccinated. But right now, I'm at a spot in my life where it's not... I don't. I think in this market right now, it's uh, you have a little more wiggle room, right? Yeah. So I'm assuming you would admit that. I don't know for sure, but you didn't have the vaccine. No. You got COVID, survived, and now. What's your understanding of immunity? Do you think you would need the vaccine? Like, no. Doesn't make sense, does it? Well, or am I just well, the only one? No. It's to me, right now, I wouldn't want it. Just. Just because... Uh, I don't even think you're allowed to get the vaccine if you just had COVID within a certain amount of time. Yeah, oh, for sure. Because it's going to whip it back in the... Whip your immune system back into chaos and it could fuck you up. Well, and and uh, me and my wife, it really went back and forth on, you know, because uh, her, my brother-in-law's in the military and he, you know, he's not against vaccines, but he wants more information. He's not... They he, mandated the military. N not, I don't know, he's... I heard a lot, a he, lot of. He them hasn't got it yet, but right, good. But they mandated his son to go to college. He had to get the vaccine. Oh my God, the college? Yeah, because he's in high school right now, but he's doing the university stuff where he does like class here, class there, 
know, back and forth. And they fucking do most of it online? No, he actually likes to go in person. But oh, that crazy shit was is that. that in order to get that, you have to get, uh, even get registered. You and, have to have a vaccine to register. Yeah. And so. Oh my God, dude. So the funny thing with that is that he fought for the very right that he's getting taken away. Like for a while, he's been fighting. No, he's, he's about that life. We'll just put it that way. He's, he's one of the real ones. He don't. He, he don't mind, I don't think he don't, he doesn't like it, but he's one of the guys that, you know, when those Taliban start playing their games, he goes to settle them down. He's that dude. He's, he's, he's Yeah, I'm glad we still have those people. Well, Hopefully we can. But the thing with this, all this mandating and stuff like that is, there's really no mandates in life. Like, why would, like, why, like, there's really always an exception for everything, Right. So why can't we give people an exception, especially if it's like we were talking earlier, doctor, medical expert funded, like that's a, that's a, if you really are one of those people that could be adversely affected by this and da, 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 you should be able to, uh, if you think that, yeah, if the you doctor, and your heart, you should leave it up to the doctor. Exactly. Like, how are we starting to just say absolutes in life now? Right? Like if the doctor understands that, wait, you have a mm -hmm. terrible immune system that is fighting all these different diseases and it's, and it's autoimmunity or whatever, and you have negative reactions to vaccine, I'm your doctor. I know that taking this vaccine is not the best idea for you right now. But the doctor's job is to figure that out. I just, I heard some crazy shit on the Joe Rogan, and I don't know if this was for real. I can't remember if I'm, hopefully I'm quoting it right, but he said that like those morbid obese factors or whatever, that like 90 or 85% of people that died or of COVID had four of them. Four, An four, average of 4.1 4. 4. or something like that. Yeah, comorbidities. Yeah, like that's fucking crazy. Yeah, no, 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 if you look at the numbers, and I follow a few guys on YouTube where you can actually see the real numbers, where they say your, your chances of a negative effect from COVID means hospitalization or death um, based on your age group and your diseases, and it's broken down into every fucking little disease. So if you're obese, the factor of having a negative effect is like 3.84, almost four times as high as the average. If, yeah. if you're just obese. And then if you add up all the other categories, there's some categories where if you have it, if you have the condition, you're less than average likely to have a negative effect from COVID. Like, and it was weird because like depression is one of them and they're thinking, we don't know why, but it's like maybe antidepressive medicines uh, help fight the COVID condition, but they they go through every single category, and the biggest one is obesity, and the next biggest one is diabetes. Oh yeah, like that's just the, the crazy part about all this. Whether you are pro COVID, pro you know anti COVID, pro vaccine, anti vaccine, is that we as a society, this is a wake up call. This is a fucking disease that preys on you being overweight and fatter than shit. It seems like we should be thankful because it didn't kill everybody. It barely did shit, and the people it did shit to, you know. But like th this, th we should be more concerned as a general public, because I'm not exactly the picture of health. But there's people that are way worse off than me, and they're they're still doing all right. Like we should, as a as a as a country, use this as a positive, because all we're using it now is a negative, and say, hey, goddamn, yeah. maybe we should use that term. Pigs get fat, hogs get slaughtered, in the fucking general term and say hey let's just scale everything back work on making everything healthier so when we as a as a culture and as a civilization go through this again we're in better fucking because at the end of the day vaccine or not it can still take you for a while right you know what i mean right there's still people are still getting people want absolute people are still dying after they have the vaccine and that, i think that's the one big thing that we're all missing here is that we think that vaccines are gonna eliminate COVID. Oh my God. That's the perception, right? And then even when you tell people like- I wanna know, talk to those people that believe that even, shit. But that's almost like the like, the word vaccine is thrown around. I don't think people truly know what that means. And people think, well, it prevents transmission. It'll get rid of COVID. Nope. And- Nope. Yeah. And so that's what we need to do. It as, might reduce the severity or your chances, but that's still up in the air. And we obviously are seeing now that the, the efficacy of the vaccine is waning sooner than they thought. Oh, five months, you need a booster every five months. 
How much does a shot cost? Do you know? Found out yesterday. Twenty dollars, somewhere around that. The the boosters are ten, so ten to twenty dollars a shot. Now, if I wanted to start an online business, say a website or something, and I wanted X amount of members to pay me ten dollars a month, I would think, oh man, geez, if I had a ten thousand members, I would do good on my my website. Well. If you mandate 330 million members to pay 20 bucks, 10 bucks, what are you getting? You know, 10 bucks gets you 3 billion. Each time a person gets a shot, for every one person, that's $3 billion to the industry. They get a second shot, three more billion. Oh, to say that these, these crooked little sons of bitches aren't, aren't using some of it for profit and for their own line in their pocket reason, we'd be crazy. Yeah, that's you just got to follow the dollar. My, my, my thing with this is that for you to mandate something that we are still unsure about, like you said, it's, they're already saying that there's a new fucking variant. There's this, multiple yeah, variants, yeah. Well, no, but there's like a new one that's emerging as like the new Delta. I, I, I heard in the UK, I was hearing some bullshit on it. What's Delta? A, B, C, D, E, Epsilon? Lambda? Something like that, it's right? It's Greek so like, alphabet. I kind of know Greek. Well, fucking good for you. I'm educated. Well, that's what we all say. Only educated people that aren't educated say that, just to let you know. That's me, because I talk <laughs> shit about being educated in my rant. <laughs> well, the funny part is, yeah, like, if you ever have to prove how educated you are, right? It's like, if two fools are arguing, who's the fool, right? Mm-hmm. So with this fucking thing, is how can you make something so absolute? Because what I'm hearing is that, you know, they said I got the Delta variant. I got confirmed that I got the Delta. They said... Delta so, Force, you should get a tattoo. Delta Force, I'm going to. I just wonder why, if it's already doing it again, doing all this little thing, and it's as wild as they say it is, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? Like you said, what are you going to do like every five months? Are we just going to have COVID clinics? Like a Sears over there on the north side is going to yeah. be a fucking COVID clinic? That's, what's, that's exactly what it's going to be. You got to get the jab. You got to get the jab. And it's like, I kept my job. I got the vaccine. I didn't feel good about it. Now I got to keep getting these fucking shots every five months that make my teeth want to fall out. Are you fucking kidding me? Yeah, like that's Oh, and it doesn't stop you from getting the disease. It doesn't stop you from transmitting the disease. And maybe it reduces the severity of a disease that's not severe. I'm done. Like the mic. It's just one of these things where you need to tell people what it does. Because people are, you know, people read anything. People believe anything nowadays. You know what I mean? You just... That, that crazy thing back in the day where they read that aliens are coming over the radio and people started freaking out thinking aliens were coming. Like that. that Recently? Was, no, this is like in the 40s. Oh, okay. And like, it was like a big old thing like, ah, aliens are coming. And then now that shit seems like a fucking, like a drop in the bucket how dumb people are now. Oh, yeah. They're saying the aliens are here and we're like, okay, cool. <laughs> like, but I can't get an Xbox <laughs> or a PlayStation and you can't buy a new fucking car. <laughs> Oh, just, like, just go back into your pod, please. Quiet. Go back in your pod. We will send you two hundred fifty dollars, please. The craziest shit is how we fucked up one whole moment in time. Like my kids, your kids, they're not going to understand what it was like to like be have, free and to have to work for shit. And how like oh. society ran before all this shit happened. Because they'll be plugged into the matrix and they'll say you'll own nothing and be happy. That's the crazy like and not, we're like forgiving student loan debt too. I'm like, damn well. This yeah, is, as soon as I just fucking paid mine off. <laughs> this is the cra the craziest shit ever is that all this shit we used to fucking joke about is happening in our life. It's a little it's frogs boiling in a pot. See it just happens a little <laughs> a little piece at a time. Little piece at a time or like and then you're like, you start to look back and you're like, wait, we were joking about this shit five years ago. And now it's just the, no, no big deal. We got the aliens. We got forced vaccinations. We got, you got to show your papers. The same fucking assholes that were yelling anti-fascist four or five years ago are, just are the ones that are saying papers, please. Like, that's what the fucking Nazis said when you're walking from place to place. Papers, please. Let me see that you have permission. That's what they do in Afghanistan. Well, that makes sense. It's a fucking war-torn country. Yeah, I mean, like, that's what we're going down to is we're no better than the dogs that we're, that we're looking at, that mm. are in the house. We're licking our own ass. That Let's don't make no down. sense. 
Yeah, so, the freest country in the world. And we're like, no, papers, well, please. Oh, my thing is, is that it does it like it's, I want things to matter. If we're going to go all in, two feet in on COVID, we're going to jump in the water. Let's do it. But don't. I had to travel last year for work in June in the height of it, the height of the, the paranoia. The paranoia, the height of the paranoia for sure. These, these fucking You airline, traveled on a plane? Or? Yeah, the airplanes are like, hey, we're going to do everything we can. We're putting your health first before profits. You get on the fucking plane, they stuff you freaking every goddamn fucking thing on the plane, every seat on the plane's packed, and they say, hey, you can uh, take your mask down when you eat. So, but, but only do it when you eat so you don't spread it. But hey, dipshit, you bring all, all of our Cokes and our little pretzels like we're stuck at the it. same time so we all take our mask off at the, at the same, same fucking time. time. It's almost like we're stuck in a goddamn... And bad so like, movie, a parody movie. It's, it's like having a, it's like having a horror girlfriend, and she, your bu- buddies keep saying like, "Hey, I keep seeing her downtown with some guy," and you're just like, "Nah, man." And then Tuesday, you guys are at Tinseltown together, holding hands. Like, get, get, you got, you got to stop. You're just, you're making yourself look dumb right now, and you're being lied to, and you don't even care. Like, oh, I was like, you know what, what I mean? the fuck are you talking about? Like, oh. that's, that's, we don't you're even You're being care. lied to. Your girl's lying to you. You're lying to you. Yeah, but you still kiss but her. But you still go back to her. You're still, you're still like, you know what? I still love her. She'll oh, still, my she, God. That's what we're doing right now. That's exactly right. That you're is, like, damn, like, they just lied. But, oh, look, and then they just tell you something else to get you off that subject. You're like, yeah, let's, let's don't worry about that. That's what, that's, what, that's what makes me so crazy. It's like, I just want, if you don't know, just be like, you know what? We don't know. We're working to figure out some solutions right now, but uh, you can't mandate shit when you don't know. That's what I'm saying. Shit. You're trying to you're, you got you got you're trying to tell me absolutes when we don't even know this thing ain't even got done mutating yet. We don't even know what the fucking first one was. We barely figured out what the first one was. The second one's already here, slapped us around. Oh no! I just heard uh, the other day that a study out of whatever said. COVID is not a respiratory illness. It's a cardiovascular illness. They just recategorized the whole thing because of new study, new understanding of... You're telling me they don't even know what kind of fucking virus it is. Yeah, it's a virus that fucks you all up. That's what they should say. It's a fuck you all up. Because yeah, it's your like guts are going to hurt. Cold. That's like saying your, and your, your respiratory stomach. and your cardiovascular are the fucking connected, you dumb fucks. <laughs> you have to put air... Into your fucking lungs, and We're then that not shit doctors, goes. Away. Obviously, yeah. Hey, but hey, congratulations, motherfucker. It does. It fucks with your whole body. It's not just a like. Hey, some people have. My wife had like really bad hip pains, like where she couldn't really want to walk. Huh. First time, you know, and then she reached out to her friends and said, "Yeah." One of them said, "Yeah, I had that." One. One of them said, "Nah, my lower back hurt." One of them said, "You know, my neck hurt really bad." So. There's nothing that's gonna. You're, we're still running this motherfucker down. But yeah, we're trying to put absolutes on it. Like, hey, like you said, the booster. What if they fuck up on one of these? Because I know a lot of smart people that I work with that do a lot of dumb shit. <laughs> what if they fuck up? Whoops, we didn't know this, this or this. We missed, we ran one number wrong. And uh, now uh, it makes you have a fucking, you know, you know, streaky black discharge out your butt if you don't get a booster every six months. You don't know. You don't know how it's going to fucking affect people. So that's what I mean. Until Long-term you know. studies. Yeah, but you, I mean, look at, they don't even mandate the fucking flu. And that shit was killing people back in the day, too, all the kinds. Mm-hmm. We, we've learned. We're, we're, it's just like everything else in this society. We're pussifying everything and trying to give everybody one blanket thing that's going to solve everything. What we've got to realize is you got to take everything case by case and, and figure shit out. Maybe you tell people, hey, we need to lock down for two weeks and so we can open back up and get shit popping. But no, it's always like, well, this two weeks. Well, then we need that, those more two weeks. We need another month here. Hey, uh, like, like, what do you say? Like, what do you tell people in Australia? I don't know what they're fucking do. They're like, I don't even know. We're, we're locking down for the next year. Who knows? That's what you I know mean. how they can do it. They took their fucking guns away. It was just a little while back where they took their fucking guns away. And now they can't do shit. Same thing in the UK. They're out there protesting against the cops, getting beat with those fucking billy clubs or whatever they're called. Oh, yeah. And they're like, fuck this stuff. This is ridiculous. And I mean, it's just a matter of time. I, the, what's crazy is the, the Americans aren't protesting. I don't see it. Um, well, we, well, but you, you see it in France. You see it in Europe. You see it in a lot of countries. 
Well, a lot of the other countries, like, do you think the Taliban gives a flying fuck about the vaccine? No, they actually uh, are, are, what are they calling it? Banning the vaccine. <laughs> Sounds like, about right. No vaccine here, motherfuckers. <laughs> We've been living in the mountains fucking goats forever, and we can hold our own. We don't need the vaccine. Say so, yep. Say so, yep. And how well, dare they not wear masks? Yep. Oh, no, wait, they do. They wear those. Fucking... When they took it over, when they took over. That's... No, we need to do a different video on Afghanistan. General consensus about having the disease physically. A lot more worry, not from me, but from the people around me. About giving it to them and all that? No, just them about my health. Oh. From, all the, from, from them being more worried, that, that, that's what the hardest part was for me. Lose a few pounds, bro. Oh, if I do, it's, <laughs> it's not safe for anybody if I do that. <laughs> but uh, everybody was just worried because of uh, all the horror stories you hear. Like, I'm a numbers guy. Uh, and when you look at stuff by the numbers, it just it is what it is. And that's just with everything in life. I could be in a more tragic accident going home just because, you know, the wrong place, wrong time, or the numbers didn't roll Dude, my way. Dude, we live in fucking Pueblo. Yeah, you ain't lying. Anything can happen. At the moment's notice. <laughs> and 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 for 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 me uh it was more uh more overblown i guess i'm lucky i guess you know what i mean but as far as it uh health-wise the most annoying part was the headache and the guts ain't nothing fun about shitting your brains out all night i did have a headache now that i think of it but that that was it like you pop a couple of those you know 200 500 milligram tylenol CBD, yeah, all day uh, long. Yeah, but uh, the respiratory, the coughing, is like the discharging of all the mucus. That's fun. That's I like that. That's the <laughs> that's the one that I I cannot fucking stand right it's now. Annoying or what? Yeah, it's because like every I take a shower twice a day just to sit in there and, and you, you think out. you put 30, 40 minutes in the shower. Is that just, your phone? Yeah, sh shitting out your nose, green shit. 30, 40 more minutes after you're done, you're doing it again. Out in the backyard, just can't quit. All right, folks, I guess we're done here. All right, hey, thanks for watching this far. And if you made it this far, I'm going to give you a present. Well, I'm not going to give it to you, but I'm going to show it to you. This is Not Your Average Joe, a print by Milana Blackman. Maybe you've seen it on the Instagram, on Joe Rogan's Instagram. It's pretty badass. Just got it framed, pretty proud of it. So I give you a wide shot. You can see this. And obviously for the other reasons that we're here. Maybe I'll give you a little closer up so you can see some of that. So what do you think? I hope you got a few things out of this uh, interview portion. And I want you to know that this is more an exercise for me to develop my thoughts, my ideas, just to record, you know, document a friend that was sick with COVID. Who knows? We can look back on this 25 years from now in retirement. Let's see, how old would I be? Yeah, retirement years, watching old videos. Or the end of the world's right around the corner and none of it fucking matters, but we'll see. The next uh portion of this video or i should say part two is a new video is my little rant and i haven't seen it in a while and like okay so now it's september goodness 10th i mean october 10th and i recorded that shit that you just watched in august so i've had it sitting around a little bit right but i did my rant back then too if I had a production team and we could get this shit out, it'd be great because it'd be uh, accurate. And I mean, the COVID thing is not going away. I hope you'll join us for the next video. When you see it pop up there on your feed, if it doesn't pop up, why don't you send a note to YouTube and give them a middle finger? Um, the second one is a rant. And I don't remember what I said, but I think it's pretty good. I think some of it's good. Actually, I can't remember any of it, but it's a rant about COVID. And it's like, what the fuck are we doing? So, 
Enjoy. Let's go to Vegas, baby. Let's get away. 